Hey guys! So today I'm going to go through my Karlsdorp succulent haul with you. Um, about a month ago, it's already a month ago, um, I went to the Karlsdorp succulent festival and um, I had a weekend there. It's about, Karlsdorp is about five hours away from Cape Town and um, we left our baby at the grandparents and my husband and I took a road trip up and just had a nice weekend away. They're also very famous for their port wine. So that was pretty cool. And um, it was just an awesome weekend of succulent nerd activities. So I bought about 40 plants, which is quite a lot of plants. I won't go through all of them with you. I think that would take way too long as much as I know you want to see them. So I've narrowed it down to my 10 uh, favorite weirdest looking ones and um, I think you are going to be impressed. There's one, I've narrowed it down to one whose name I don't know so I will need your help with that. Okay, so number one over here. Now this is one that I've been wanting for a very long time. This is an Albia Viricosa. Um, in Afrikaans they call it an Arsblom and um, mainly the most fascinating thing about it is its flower. Its flower is a, a large star-shaped yellow flower with purple markings and um, it's absolutely beautiful. Hang on, I hear a cat. Let me just go open the door. Apologize for interrupting the video, Mau Mau. Apologize. Never mind. Uh, okay. So where was I? Okay. Yes, the Arsblom. Really, really awesome plant. Um, it is also native to South Africa. So I'm very excited to see its flower. And um, you'll, you'll be seeing lots of updates of this guy. The second one is native to Namakwa land. It is a... Sorry, I'm going to be looking at the names quite a lot because they're new to me and they are very weird. This is a Fenestraria Rofa Flofilla. Believe it or not, I've practiced that, saying that a couple of times. Rofa Flofilla. Um, it looks like something you'd find under the sea. Um, it's got all these little pinnacles over here. You can see them. And um, it's is native to Namakwaland, which is a part of South Africa on the west coast and um, it's very but Namakwaland is well known for its flowering season around October the whole landscape just changes and you just see beautiful beautiful flowers and um, this guy apparently has very big daisy like flowers as well quite brightly colored so again a flower that I'm looking forward to seeing Okay, now here we go. This is a Lithops Optica Verubra. Yeah, Optica Rubra. And um, it's a living stone. You can see there, it's a living stone. Um, commonly known as a living stone. It's pink, obviously Rubra, it's pink. And um, it's one of the most identifiable Lithops out there because of its pink color. Uh, I've only got one other living stone, so this is very exciting to have a second one in tow. I think this might be the start of my collection. Okay, now, this funny guy, Aeonium tabuliforma, okay, super, super flat rosette. You can see if you hold the pot up there, you can barely see if there's anything there. Uh, it looks like a serviette. So this is also, this is another plant that is, this is, I think, uh, not native to South Africa. It's, um, it originates from the Canary Islands and um, therefore it does not deal very well with too much extreme heat. Uh, it, its leaves curl up when it's too hot, which um, is something I'm going to have to watch out for because most of my plants are indigenous and are used to the temperature climate so I'll probably have to water it a little bit more often and um, but I'm very very excited about that oh the other the other cool thing about this is that it's it's 
common there's a common nickname for it called the dinner plate Ionium, which I think is quite cool. It does look a bit like a plate. See there? It could be like a also like a rose, it could be your hair. So cool. Your hat. <laughs> okay. Then another cool one. Okay, when I first saw this guy, this is Euphorbia stellata. When I first saw him, look there, it looks like a uh, starfish on a rock, right? It does. You just don't need to use your imagination too hard. Um, when I did a bit more research about him, apparently his leaves, he doesn't only have those few leaves, he actually has quite a lot more. This is quite a small um, specimen. No, no. Can I carry on? So that's him. And the amazing thing about this guy is um, he is from the Eastern Cape originally, South Africa Eastern Cape, and he's quite difficult to establish. But once he's established, and I think this one is, um, easy, it's quite easy care to look after. So I'm excited for that because not often do you get such a weirdly looking succulent that you don't need to do too much effort with so that's very cool okay then i've got this cool thing again sea vibes right uh let me see if i can do this without pouring out too much soil very very much sea vibes going on there um and actually it's a cactus um which you would not really think you would really not think it being a cactus. It doesn't really have any, not very massive um, thorns or anything like that. So I would, it's not something I would immediately say is a cactus, but it is a cactus. And it is actually nicknamed a sea urchin cactus because it looks like a sea urchin. Um, so this apparently has a massive yellow, yellow flower that comes out of it as well. It is... Um, from it originates from the USA so I think this is my second plant that doesn't originate from South Africa it originates in the USA and they actually have when I was doing some research about them they've got, actually got way more um, identifiable markings this one is quite I wouldn't say dull but it's quite um, straightforward with its markings you get different colors and you get all sorts of different vibes going on so that's very cool then let me see here Okay, this I had to uh, research its name. I know it quite well, but I don't know the scientific name. So when I first found out about this one, we, it was two years ago at the Succulent Festival. Um, yes, I've been more than once. That's how much of a nerd I am. <laughs> um, so when we went to the Succulent Festival last time, we did a, a walk through the felt uh, near Karlitzdorf and as you go, you go on this little mountain, and as you go, literally every three meters, the guy, the guide is like, "Look here, this is the succulent. Look there, that's that succulent." This guy, we almost didn't see because it's really close to the ground. Um, it protrudes very, very sort of shallow, and when it's, it comes under bushes, quite a lot of what they call. Um, nursery bushes that help with a little bit of shade that help nurture the little succulents and um, so we found some we found these but it was a bit difficult so another name they give these are the I think it's um, the common name is um, horse in Afrikaans would be Pavla and um, that translates in English as horse teeth and um, its scientific name is a Hawthia truncata. Truncata because the leaves uh, are so apparently they fall away abruptly. So they've got a very abrupt end to them. So it really does look like a pair of, like a couple of horse teeth if you look at it like that. Um, the cool thing about this is that it is from the Karlistorp area or what they call the small Karoo. It is. Um, quite a shallow plant so and it has shallow roots to absorb as much water as possible um, 
always find it amazing how succulents just adapt so uh, cleverly to their environments to maximize water. I mean, that's their biggest thing. And um, they're actually a very vulnerable species because in the small Karoo where Karlsdorp is, you have a lot of um, eradication of natural spaces because of farming. Um, you also have uh, ostriches who quite like to munch in these. And then thirdly and very sadly, collectors are after these guys. So they actually come in and they take them away. So the protection status or environmental status is vulnerable, um, which is quite sad. But these were grown, uh, these were cultivated by a grower, so I don't feel guilty at all by keeping them. I feel very lucky that I'm able to. Okay, moving on. Look at this fine specimen. What could it be? So, also, this guy came with no name. And um, I did some research and turns out he is I googled at firstly I firstly googled um plant that looks like a pineapple because it does kind of look like a bit like a pineapple and um it literally google images spat out this exact same picture and um it's a what so the common name is a pine cone a pine cone succulent because it looks like a pine cone and um it's official name is a Euphorbia burpleophora and um, it actually has it actually grows more leaves than this and you can see there are a few dead leaves then I thought when I got back from my trip overseas I thought oh shit it, um, I've killed this plant by not watering it enough and here leaves are dying on me but apparently the leaves do die away in um, summer months so I'm feeling a bit relieved about that and um, I'm very excited to see how it grows. Okay, so this one is my favorite one. I'm very excited about it. Uh, its name is a Dioscoria elephantipis. It does not look like a succulent at all. It looks like a vine. You can see little heart leaf leaves and um, you can see its little trunk down there is quite, it's just, it's just, on top of the surface. Uh, the common name for this plant is an elephant's foot, which is very cute. Um, the reason being why it's called an elephant's foot is because that, that large trunk is actually grows quite um, bulbous and takes over a huge area of surface space on the soil and be, is very fissured, so it actually looks like an elephant's foot. You can see, you can use your imagination and it does look a bit like an elephant's foot, but apparently when it's older and bigger it looks a lot more like that um, and the other reason why I'm super excited about this plant is that I've just realized that it is native to the small town where I grew up called Uniondale um, Uniondale, Willowmore and I think there was some other well, another little town as well so it's a very sub species area um, I call a very narrow locale where you can find these and when I was growing up, I wasn't very much into plants. I didn't really care. But now, you know, seeing this, I was like, oh, damn, I wish I could be back in that situation and in that area so I could actually go see it in the wild. Seeing plants in the wild is just such an amazing experience. And it's just, um, you know, I think we're so used to seeing everything on demand, cultivated uh, right here and there, that when you actually have to go hunting, succulent hunting, um, it's a massive thrill to finally find something and to see it in the shape that it is in and um, all the different colors and variations like I just think it's absolutely stunning that it actually comes uh, forward in desert semi-arid areas you get all these very bizarre alien like plants so he's my most exciting I think I don't know Almost has got two labels here. I almost read the wrong label, but that's the right label. Okay, guys, that is all. Um, I will be po po posting updates and I will be posting photos of these guys in coming months. If you have any questions, please let me know. And oh my goodness, I forgot about the last one. Hang on one moment, don't go anywhere. So, 
you have to tell me what this is because I've got no idea. Internet searches were just terrible. Okay. It looks like a brain. Okay. I am not a zombie, I promise. This looks like a brain. Or if you wanted to say it looks like a piece of coral, if you wanted to be nicer, but I would say it looks like a brain. Okay, it just needs to be a bit more pinky to be a brain, but that is definitely a brain. What is this? Um, I wrote down what I thought it might be, which is a malaria, malaria elongatia or a cactus, a brain cactus. So if you know what this is, please do let me know. Um, I am dying for an ID. Very interesting. Thanks guys. Hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.